Welcome back to At Home with the Dogginses. Hello, friends. And welcome to the Only Murders in the Building recap episode. I guess if you're so. if you're not caught up on Only Murders in the Building, this will contain spoilers. So or uh, everything, yeah, yeah. So you probably want to skip this one. But we realized we have yet to actually dedicate an episode to Only Murders, yeah. even though we've been watching, you know, since season one. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Season three just ended, and we. Mostly liked it. Yes, yes. I, I think this season was better than season two, for sure. It's interesting because I've seen a lot of people say like the mystery was more disappointing this season. Mm -hmm. And that might be true, but I'm also barely watching this show for the mystery. No, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm watching it because it's a funny Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez show, and they're all great in it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, who would have thought that those three would be like... Our, our, our new three amigos, basically. Yeah, like, I mean, obviously the two of them we yeah. knew had chemistry, but uh, but she's great on this show. Yes. And, you know, this season they added uh, the ghost of Paul Rudd mm -hmm. <laughs> and they added Meryl Streep. Yeah. I will just say, mm -hmm. I never actually thought that Meryl would turn out to be the killer. Because Neither it was, did I. But that's mostly just because it was too obvious. Yeah. It was too, it was... They were clearly trying to play into the the biggest guest star is the killer trope mm -hmm. of, of your laws and orders and your yeah, yeah, yeah. CSIs. But I never thought it would be her. I actually most of the time thought it would be Tobert. Same. Just, same. Just, yeah. be, just because like, I mean, it would have been doing the same thing from season one as the murderer turns out to be one of the main characters love interest mm -hmm. and you know they were they were i honestly thought they were using meryl to distract from it being tobert from, yeah. from it being a different love interest yeah because i think jesse l williams is like the third most popular person of like the new add-ins basically like well he also just like i will be blunt mm -hmm. none of my predictions involving the mystery had anything to do with like the actual in-story clues yeah they, yeah they all had to do with the tropes they're playing yeah yeah and like during the the pickwick triplets number mm -hmm. you know how it's you know they're they're you know using that to look for evidence but in that song it's it's like you know has my inspection been too cursory should i look outside this nursery mm -hmm. i was like okay they're clearly on a meta level hinting that it's not actually someone in the cast yeah and also tobert just seemed like he seemed too i think for me the there were times where his technological incompetence made me think, oh, has he been kind of bluffing up this like career? And it's cl like he's actually one of the, you, you know, what was the name of the the only murder fan group that always introduced like in season one? Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the I, I forget what the fan club's name was. They didn't really come up this season. No, did they? they didn't. They didn't like they had their they had their little like pop in for season two. But like they kind of like were, you know, not even a consideration this season because I think clearly like, you know, we wanted the musical to be what we're focusing in on. Um, yes. And I, I got to say, I don't say this often, but good work. Paysack and Paul. <laughs> The best they've done, my yeah. God. <laughs> um, except for the one song that Sarah Bareilles did write, though, like that was fantastic. Like, sure. Well, but but uh, I believe Pasek and Paul wrote uh, which of the Pickwick triplets did it. And, yeah. And that is, you know, I know I think Mark Shaman also worked on some of the songs. This I'm season. assuming Creatures of the Night might be his um, his big one. But yeah, because it was announced that he, like they had hair, writers for Hairspray, writers for Waitress and writers for uh, Dear Evan Hansen do a couple of the songs. So, mm -hmm. You know, Pickwick Triplets is just a solid patter song that yeah. works yeah. and is catchy and fun. Now, obviously, I've gotten which of the Pickwick Triplets did it stuck in my head many times. Absolutely. You've since, sung it quite a bit. Yeah. Since the full song was revealed. But here's the thing. When I get it stuck in my head, mm -hmm. the part at the end where it slows down, the or coochie coochie coo. What if none of it is true? <laughs> My brain then goes to, I'd prefer a new edition of the Spanish Inquisition <laughs> to ever let a woman in my life. This really was a song that was written for Rex Harrison to sing, and <laughs> unfortunately he's been dead for some Which time. Which of the big quick triplets did it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, apparently in New York right now, the theater where they shot a lot of that, they're doing um, I interactive, immersive, like walk through stuff where you can like look at uh, Very nice. the stage and stuff. And I'm a little jealous, I ain't gonna lie. We did watch the, um, uh, what was it, Architectural Digest did did the uh, did the set tour. Y'all, listen, Architectural Digest, I think, is one of the more underrated channels on YouTube because they do these 
amazing immersive like sequences where you're just getting to walk through sets of homes for like the Barbie one they did a couple months ago. Absolutely phenomenal. And the one they did for this one, truly fantastic. Um, you also get, there's a classic one where I think Dakota Johnson was talking about her house and she, uh, claimed to love the color green and then admitted several months later that she lied in her interview for it. <laughs> and it became like a whole fucking meme. Uh, is that what was actually not the truth? <laughs> one of the many non truths <laughs> That's not actually true, Ellen. Uh, but it's just the getting a chance to kind of look at the set in greater detail on that. It's it's if you watch the show, please look for the Architectural Digest, um, you know, walkthrough of the sets because it's phenomenal because it also has a possibly my favorite Easter egg of all time was in that video that I cannot get out, away from, which is that um, when we visited Ben slash uh, uh, apartment, uh, uh, Paul Rudd's uh, mm-hmm. apartment, uh, we find <laughs> there's a lot of fake posters for different movies that his character was in including was it chinook rising was that the name of like I think his so yeah it was like a pro iraqi war film and like right next to it there is like a painting that is claimed uh to be that george w bush made of his character as a thank you for making the film <laughs> and it's just that easter egg has burned so deep into my brain and has exploded in such a way i just will never let it go we'll never fucking let it go such a uh <laughs> so like such a fun weird detail that mm-hmm. honestly sounds like a joke from the show and it's never actually in the script of the show yeah <laughs> like it's it sounds like a story martin short would tell mm-hmm. on the show an, an oliver putnam story by the way very impressive they managed to keep everything light-hearted while giving one of the main characters two heart attacks over yeah. the course of the season yeah. <laughs> Oliver secretly has been having the most devastating shit happen to him on this show like b- between like him finding out that he's not the biological father of his son will to like the heart issues his son who only showed up in the first episode i think so i think will only popped in the one time and yeah and or 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 right after the heart attack he showed up right after the heart attack because he was there at the when they were doing the halter monitor thing which then got like brought back to right yeah a a lot of a lot of bleak stuff uh (laughs) covered on a murder show Mm -hmm. um a failed engagement yeah the white room which i was hoping one more time one more trip into the white room like would have been fun it would have been fun but like oh so speaking of easter eggs in the architectural digest they confirmed that uh a lot of the stuff in oliver's apartment is references to martin short's career (laughs) and i love it's like mostly winnie's clothing that she kind of wears from time to time like but I feel like it had to be on purpose that uh, Wesley Taylor's character is a creepy son named Clifford. Yes, yes. <laughs> that, that, that was fully on purpose mm-hmm. that, uh, that that was a Clifford. <laughs> um, it's also like in Paul Rudd's apartment, formerly Amy Schumer's, formerly Sting's. Mm-hmm. Who knows who's it'll be next season. Hopefully Matthew Broderick because we yeah. got some great chemistry him and Uma, <laughs> goddamn! Like, yeah. At the end, I would love to see that dynamic explored just, further. Yes. <laughs> Bro- Broderick, I, I really just hope that he's like Uma's new partner at the pickle diner, just like you know, getting their little orders like she and Bunny used to do. <laughs> like, yeah. Also, the Broderick episode. You know, Broderick. Broderick was in one of the promos, so we knew he was coming eventually. Mm-hmm. I thought he was going to be the mysterious doctor that get, that got brought up a couple of times in there. I. I don't remember why I thought he would be playing himself. I don't remember if I saw that announced somewhere mm-hmm. or if I was just really guessing that it would be himself. Because um, I feel like with some celebrities that are in this show, they're either playing a character or they're playing themselves. There is just yes. like, yeah. But uh, we knew he was coming. We did not know it would lead to a FaceTime with Mel Brooks. That was fucking great. That was... God, you fucked yourself. It's just like, just... <laughs> it's like you did what it, it was this show's equivalent of benoit blanc's uh among us game with angela lansbury and sondheim <laughs> oh my god you're totally right if we're comparing you, you know if we're comparing two different murder comedies that have jackie hoffman in them yeah <laughs> um but yeah, OK, so the little note that uh, Oliver hadn't even seen the producers, which is very funny considering, you know, Marty played Leo in the producers yeah. at the Pantages. Uh, it's like, so. 
was he in that episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm where uh, 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 Larry David uh, goes in? I don't remember, but uh, Martin Short has also played Larry David on Saturday Night Live. Mm. <laughs> So it's possible. Because, like, I think the one episode of Curry Things Ed that I do remember watching the full way through is the one where he actually goes on stage as a uh, Max Bialystok and just like Leo and uh, and and mm-hmm. Anne uh, just like being like, no, this isn't going to run for fucking ever. <laughs> we wanted to stop. <laughs> but so, you know, we've obviously had Nathan Lane in the series, not mm-hmm. this season, but now we've had. You know, we've had the uh, the Leo to his Max. Yeah. So now we need the Max to Martin Short's Leo, who I believe was Jason Alexander. Yes, yes. Um, I, I got to assume Nathan was busy filming that, that movie Dicks that is about to come out. Probably. That looks super weird. Most likely. Yeah. I've heard good things about that. I have too. I, I never went to go see the live show of it. It was called like Fucking Identical Twins, I think, when it was at UCB. But it was mm-hmm. really, really popular for a long fucking time. But yeah, like like I said, I watched the show for the comedy for the and this season for the musical numbers and uh i was basically satisfied with this season Mm -hmm. um you know i I did figure out uh, obviously again like all the clues i had were meta clues Mm -hmm. so i knew that she wouldn't really have been the killer especially because as soon as they figure out it's her they're like hey uh have you tried this red herring dip yeah it's it's like okay (laughs) that Mm -hmm. that was not subtle also, we figured out pretty quickly that uh, Meryl Streep was clearly the birth mother of one of the two. But like, yeah, I, I think we thought at first, like, oh, maybe she's Ben's real mother. But then when they said at the start of the next episode that uh, he was not the adopted one, then yeah. it's like, OK, so she's his real mother. Yeah. And also, uh, I have seen some people say that the resolution to that was a little anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, like, the emotions of it worked just because of the acting. Yeah. But it was just like, she doesn't even get out, I'm your mother, and he's like, I figured it out. And, uh, we're, and we're just like, well, it's a, it's a good thing that you're actually on the same page about this unspoken thing. And, Mm -hmm. and, and it's, cause, cause, like, we were speculating on a version of this that got a little more Oedipal. (laughs) Yep. And that, that would not have been the same kind of fun, lighthearted no, no, uh, no. murder show. It also, like, once she confessed, we figured out, okay, either her son did it or at least she thinks her son did it. Yeah. And because clearly the theme of all of this is about mothers protecting children. Which once we learned that John Hoffman, one of the uh, co-creators of the show, uh, had lost his mother, um, the yeah. previous series, like, yeah, this is this makes so much sense. Everything became pretty clear. Yeah. And uh, I think it's good that that information got withheld until after, because I think everyone would have figured out. Everyone right? would have figured out right away. Yeah. What was going on? Um, I do think, again, on a meta level, like they had the other two characters talk about, you know, loving L.A. and small doses. Didn't have Steve Martin mention L.A. at all. Mr. Whittier himself. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> uh, if next season does have uh, them having to go to L.A. for parts of it, It'll be once again interesting on a meta level to see Steve Martin in an L.A. story. <laughs> there are so many little nods to like Father of the Brides and stuff like that, which I just. Uh, yes, when, when they r- ran in when she was in the wedding dress and they're like, yes, we're the fathers of the bride. <laughs> <laughs> and I do like they kind of put Martin Short in franc drag for that one specifically. <laughs> <slightly>. like, yeah. <laughs> Did you see uh, uh, when they hosted SNL? Uh, I think it was last year and they did the Father of the Bride uh, vaguely remember this yeah sequel sketch and martin short comes in as franc and the and the trailer voice is like yes martin short is back doing an accent that we're pretty sure is still okay yeah <laughs> but yeah lots of little meta career nods like the <laughs> uh steve martin's costume in the show was a little reminiscent of one of his clouseau costumes yeah, 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 yeah. again they're referencing all the remakes he did father of the bride pink panther it, it, it it's like I know he was in many as a remake for a while there. Yeah, there was no like cheaper by the dozen like pull. Not that I noticed, yeah. but it doesn't mean it wasn't there. I also barely remember what happens in his version of Cheaper by the Dozen. Yeah. So it's possible there was a reference that I just completely missed. I'd like to imagine that they wanted to get Hillary Duff to play like the Ashley Park character just to kind of have that in, but like <laughs> it just didn't work out. Wasn't Tom Welling his oldest son in that one? I believe so, yeah. And then I don't remember who any of the other kids were. Allison Stoner was one of them. Oh, that tracks. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, Piper Parabo was one of them, right? She was, yeah. Okay. I remember very little of Steve Martin's remake of Cheaper by the Dozen. And I remember even less of Yours, Mine, and Ours, so. Yes, which was Dennis Quaid in that And Rene Russo. And Rene Russo. Yeah. Yes. I remember thinking, clearly they greenlit a remake of Yours, Mine, and Ours to cash in on the remake of Cheaper by the Dozen. Holy, yes. I remember thinking, like, even though these aren't the same movie... Uh, we have definitely talked about the Yours, Mine, and Ours remake before. I feel like we have, but I can't remember the context of that, yeah. It was probably one of the times we were talking about Lucille Ball. Yeah, most likely. (laughs) We have, like, eight things we talk about on this show. Mm -hmm. I liked that there was a little bit more, um, uh, places explored in this one. Like, yeah. Even though we didn't do too much exploration beyond like the theater and the the apartment, Um, because like I feel like we had we went to more spots like Mm -hmm. last season. But like I feel like with this one, because the theater was so expressive and you kind of had like that weird ghost subplot that was kind of happening with Gideon as well. Yeah, yeah. I liked that they ramped up Howard's role in the season overall. Uh, he was uh, uh, quite fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, he has been consistently one of my favorite side r- characters like in the show. And I'm glad we, he had a little bit more to play with. Yeah. Uh, good good stuff from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did downplay Uma. She's only in like three episodes. Yeah. I, I gotta wonder if she was like filming that weird pink a lady show that disappeared immediately like the pink lady show that was pulled before anyone had a chance to watch it yeah uh we're only assuming she had a large role in that show because she's in the trailer they played at every commercial break when we were watching anything on paramount plus absolutely when i say anything you know i mean cheers and fraser yeah yeah let's be real let's be real i'll also say the little plot thread of uh Mabel breaking off from her old guys was resolved like a little too neatly. Yeah, a little too quickly. I thought like it felt like they were going to I realize when you're doing a 10 episode streaming season, you can't really drag plot lines out. Mm -hmm. But like it felt like it started late and then ended early. And all it took was them actually paying her the slightest attention for her to like completely disregard breaking off on her own i mean that's part of the other reason i thought it would be taubert was because he was clearly at least in that moment representing the temptation that was pulling her away yeah but within that whole thing i kind of felt like the whole cinda thing Mm -hmm. was left a little at a loose end that was like one episode um yeah like she just appears and says you should strike off on your own and then that's basically all she does in the season yeah (laughs) and she might have still been busy uh (laughs) With with the fucking uh, Brana movie. Yeah, but. yeah. Like, they had her for one day, and then she had to go right back to Venice. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, it's like, she's just there to, like, plant the seeds of doubt in Mabel's mind. Mm-hmm. And then Tobert was really, like, who he she... He had the watering can to just really help uh, right, the seeds like, grow. <laughs> and, and, and he was who she was turning to when she was turning away from her old guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, turns out that wasn't actually like uh, an us or him scenario. It, it, it just felt like it was being played like that at first, like he was representing like a dark pull, which is why I thought he would turn out to be the killer. But no, he's just he's just an innocent bystander in all this. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's also just the fact that, like, they did so little to suspect him. Like, like, like again, it was all meta reasons I was going, mm-hmm. I was thinking it would be him, was because it's like, well, they're not ca- casting that much actual, they're not having the characters suspect him that much. Yeah. So that's why, that's how they do the, oh, it's the one you least suspected. But, uh, no, he, he, he just really was just there and mm-hmm. will probably be there next season too, at least in some capacity. And uh, I know they said they're hoping Meryl will come back, at least in some capacity. I hope at least, like, if it isn't for the full season, it's like to wrap up whatever possible storyline that might be Mm -hmm. with uh, her and Marty, which, you know, Oliver deserves a little bit of joy, even though he is a giant ball of fucking chaos. Like, yeah, everyone deserves a little, a little happiness. Um, And, uh... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and Charles may not get it because Joy left him for Scott Bakula. <laughs> I really hope he shows up, though. Yeah. I hope so, because this is like the third time they've rep- like in the very first episode. Uh, Oliver mixes him up with Scott Bakula. Yeah. <laughs> and even though like they don't 
look anything alike, but no, no. <laughs> but like, yeah, I, I, I hope we get a Bacula appearance before before the show runs its course. My one tiny disappointment about this season, because I think I had mentioned this to you at some point, is like I was really hoping that the Mabel's infamous aunt would show up in this season. Oh, yeah. Like she's always been talked around or talked about because she was the owner of that apartment before, you know, it got sold off. I was really hoping that there would be like a, you know, a cameo from the aunt just to be like, you know, ah, yes, this is my apartment. Thank you for doing this, Mabel. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can still see her eventually in theory, but mm-hmm. but yeah, it did seem like in this season where she was actually prepping the apartment to be sold, that, yeah. that did seem like the missed opportunity. I've also seen so many uh variants and jokes of, of people being like uh being like how many murders have to happen in your building before you move and everyone else being like, if you have an apartment like that in New York <laughs> all of them. <laughs> and you still would say what <laughs> Yeah, like after all of that, like it was basically a solidly enjoyable season that wasn't like full of massive surprises. Mm -hmm. Um, The biggest surprise being that Jane Lynch is dead now. (laughs) Or maybe dead. I mean, you know, there's still time to give a convenient coma. (laughs) That's true, because Paul Rudd wasn't dead when we thought he was dead. Yeah, he uh, was just almost dead and then died shortly afterwards. Yeah, just so that the murder could happen in the building. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I look forward to next season. I look forward to seeing where they go with it. Same, yeah. Uh, I look forward to seeing Jane Lynch in a bunch of flashbacks. Mm -hmm. I also thought, like, when she first showed up and said she had something important to tell Charles, I thought it was going to be that she was dating Joy now. Yeah. (laughs) But, uh, because she just tends to pick up Charles' exes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Or that she and Jan are in a weird three-way with Joy now, too. (laughs) All of Charles' exes are... Mm -hmm banging his stunt double we also didn't really hear anything this season about the state of the brazos reboot yeah yeah like i could easily assume that it was already canceled mm-hmm. but uh, <laughs> but they, they didn't say one way or the other while you know charles was busy on broadway yes yes but yeah looking forward to next season looking mm-hmm. forward to seeing jane lynch in at least as many flashbacks as we saw paul rudd in this season and yeah. bunny in last season yeah uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the L.A. bits because I feel like um, I'm assuming Brazos is probably filmed in L.A. a bit. So I feel like if they're going to do some like real back in the day shit. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if mm. uh, L.A. like they set it up too much for it to. And it could just be setting up. This is our excuse for these actors not being here next season. Yeah. But it also seems it seems like a setup. If they end up announcing that they're going to be doing one day at Knott's Berry Farm, you better fucking be working that day. <laughs> Steve's coming home. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't we joke around saying it'd be kind of great if, like, you know, he started his career at the Birdcage and then ended his career as Bird Jays? Because <laughs> <laughs> if, if his final scene from his final season was at the Birdcage Theater. Yeah. Seems unlikely, mm-hmm. but uh, but yeah, uh, this is one of the few shows where getting killed off is a guarantee for more screen time next season. Yeah, than you had. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I'm sure next season will be fun. Um, but until then, now that only murders is done for the season, we move on to the gay pirate show. Indeed, we do, uh, and possibly the after party, which uh, my friend Sir Aesop, who has a new book coming out in October, recommended wholeheartedly. Yeah, I heard good things about the after party. Haven't seen it yet, um, but we might check that out. But yeah. yeah, but I only say our flag because it started like the week after. Yeah, uh, and. Next week, well, in, in two days, as you're hearing this, Frasier comes back yes. and you know we're all over that. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have our theories. Um, I know we had talked about maybe doing like a recap, but I think until like the, all the strikes are done, I, we're going to just I, do another. Yeah, I, I think we'll just do a Frasier episode when the season's done, yeah. looking back on it. But we did our speculation episode. I've got some more speculation Same. based on other things. So they release like a behind the scenes, you know, a bunch of interviews uh, with the cast and crew that has a couple more clips from the episode in it. And I've pieced together some things from clips where in the trailer, there was the clip where Frazier talks about Freddie has this girlfriend I know nothing about. But elsewhere, I saw that character listed as Freddie's roommate. Mm-hmm. And then I saw a clip in the new behind the scenes where she's talking about like, so you want me to lie about who I am all night? No, I love it. And I'm wondering if she has to pretend to be Freddie's girlfriend because Freddie is gay and hasn't come out to his father yet, yeah. which would be like the ultimate escalation of all the uh, 
of all the Joe Keenan written gay farces yeah. of, of the original series. But that's just guessing. They also had a line in a clip where Fraser talks about, like, I was never my best self when I was in Boston before. Spent all my time hanging around a certain bar. <laughs> so ironically saying that while he's in a different bar, yeah. which might which might be addressed in the final scene. Yeah. But I guess that's how they're avoiding the cheers question is he's specifically avoiding cheers yeah. so as not to go back to that part of his life. Uh, also, um, you said that there was like another one where it may uh, have come off that Freddie was also telling everybody that his dad was dead. Just the way that Fraser. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was one clip like no setup for it. Where Frazier like says to Freddy like surprised to see me alive or something and Freddy's like dad and Frazier's like I'm not done talking Oedipus it's like <laughs> okay so clearly Freddy quote unquote killed his father in some story much like Frazier did to Martin decades before this family tradition man and like when in 25 <laughs> years when they do the Freddy reboot they're gonna yeah. have his kid do the same thing so all right that's enough Frazier talk for now we'll yes. s we'll save it for uh when it's all out though speaking of which Kelsey would totally make sense to be on Only Murders though. He honestly would. He he yeah. he, uh, he he would uh, if he was in New York. If he was on Broadway at the time, he would uh, make sense to be like um, a similar character to Nathan Lane's character. Oh, fully, yeah. I know Chevy Chase has expressed interest, but also has not reached out, and uh, they're not reaching out to him. No, no. <laughs> and uh, we, it, it's. I I remember. Chevy doesn't know the meaning of being the bigger man. He <laughs> just like. <laughs> I remember when um, Steve and Marty did that Netflix special a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, and I remember the trailer for it, like, was was uh, framing it as, like, your two favorite amigos are back. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they're just assuming you don't care about Chevy. Yeah, and they are correct. <laughs> oh, yeah, they are. But, uh... I, my dad and I were both excited to watch that. And I remember weirdly when we watched it, I was more into it than he was. Like, <laughs> and my dad was the bigger amigos fan, like the, the two of us. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like, okay. <laughs> the magic is gone. <laughs> I remember mostly enjoying that special, but it also wasn't anything particularly no, special. No, it was designed to be like a fun disposable piece of fluff, though I got to say, um, I'm always very impressed with like Steve Martin's ability to banjo play. Like he's a very good player. Yeah, he's got the good fingers. I'll say. <laughs> yeah. Not from experience, just... <laughs> So that is our true podcast recap about the fake show about the fake true crime podcast. Mm -hmm. Have you been keeping up with it? We would love to hear your feelings on the show. If not... <laughs> if not, sorry, we spoiled everything for yeah. you. Uh, we, we, we talked in vague enough terms that it'll just be inaccessible if you haven't been watching Absolutely. it, I think. That's, that's what we bring, chaos, baby doll. Yeah. Chaos and schmackeries, that's all we do. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, looking forward to next season of Only Murders. We'll talk about other stuff we've been watching as we watch it. Mm -hmm. I guess we never did a full Our Flag episode either. Yeah, we can do that eventually. Yeah, we talked about doing it, but never actually did it. Um, we have seen thus far the first three episodes, and they are... Uh, it fucks. Uh, yeah, it's it, it, very emotional. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, until next time, this has been At Home with the Dogginses. Later days, y'all. Later days. Later days.